two American classics out of local classrooms tonight. I believe that it's not right to even put that in a book, let alone read it to a child. Accused of corruption, Norfolk City Treasurer will take the stand. He's innocent. And changing your commute. Only Chopper 10 can take you above this project three years in the making. But first, we're covering several breaking stories tonight. We're going to start in Hampton. Police say they're investigating a shooting here on Worcester Avenue near Victoria Boulevard. Around 7.30, investigators walked into a home and found a man badly hurt. He's at the hospital now. They were not ready yet to identify a suspect or a motive. Then, a stabbing investigation, breaking news in Portsmouth here. Police say it involves at least one teen who is in the hospital. Another woman and man were also involved in the incident here on Randolph Street, but it is still not clear if they were stabbed. Officers were not prepared to release any suspect information just yet. We have a crew getting information, so stay with us as we work to get more for you. And we're on top of yet another breaking story coming in from Chesapeake. Police are investigating a hit and run that left three people hurt. Around 9 o'clock tonight, officers say one vehicle hit another at South Military Highway and Paramount Avenue. Medics transported all three people to the hospital. They expect all to survive. No information about the suspect's vehicle just yet. And a breaking story coming in from Charlotte where protesters making it clear now that they are not happy that an officer will not face criminal charges for killing a man back in September. No peace! No peace! The shooting sparked days of protest when it happened, but controversy has ignited again after today's announcement. Dramatic videos did not show whether Keith Scott was carrying a weapon at the time. The police officer opened fire, but police say he had a gun. Today, prosecutors announced that Officer Vincent acted lawfully because he knew Scott had a gun and drugs in his vehicle. Meanwhile, a police officer injured after a shooting in Raleigh is developing news tonight. Investigators say the suspect was also hurt. Police went to investigate reports of a break-in at an apartment complex this afternoon before the gunfire. Officers have not yet said how badly either person was hurt. The State Bureau of Investigations is working to learn more tonight. And it seems Mother Nature got her months mixed up. A warm day today is giving way to a wet night. Chief Meteorologist Don Slater is tracking all of it from the Super Doppler 10 Weather Center. Don? Yeah, for the past hour, we've seen some rain moving rapidly on through the region. And we could see a little pop of heavier rainfall coming up in the next hour as well. I want to show you what's going on. Now, these areas of rain that we're seeing, we're not seeing anything severe as far as big thunderstorms out of these, but they are moving rapidly. And, you know, some of these uh, areas that are in kind of a darker color, kind of the orangish color, uh, that could contain some heavier rain. And this is moving rapidly east at about 60 miles an hour. So we'll storm track it as it moves to the northeast toward Virginia Beach. It'll be uh, toward downtown Norfolk, for example, at 1148 Landstown in Virginia Beach by around midnight. So again, that's just to give you an idea of how rapidly these storms are moving, if you can call them storms. There are pockets, really, of heavy rain moving through the Murfreesboro and a Husky area. But we're not seeing evidence of lightning out of these areas for right now. Over the south side, kind of the southern portions of the south side, into the Franklin area, seeing some pockets of heavier rainfall on out to the southwest of Wakefield. Peninsula occasionally seeing a little bit of rain and a lot more rain, more widespread uh, for the middle peninsula and the northern neck. And that's the movement of everything. As far as our chances of rain, here's what we've got going on through the overnight hours. 11 o'clock, yep, <laughs> right now. 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, uh, but then it tapers off after that. So what else do we get instead of rain for tomorrow? I'll tell you, just a few minutes. Well, Huckleberry Finn, To Kill a Mockingbird, two American literary classics revered and reviled for decades for different reasons. Well, now a complaint about their content has forced school officials to suspend the titles from classroom use on the Eastern Shore. Ten of your size, Liz Kilmer, joins us now with this story that's all new tonight. Liz? Yeah, Tom, we're told a parent filed a complaint against the novels in Accomack County. They're two classics that are banned in some schools across the nation for including racial slurs. Now, whether they'll be banned in Accomack, though, remains to be seen. The superintendent says there's no final decision just yet. Two American classics temporarily pulled from school bookshelves in Accomack County. The result, according to the superintendent, of a parent filing a complaint. Right now, we are a nation divided as it is. 
Earlier this month, a parent went before the school board expressing concerns about racial slurs into Kill a Mockingbird and the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. In recorded audio from the November 15th meeting, she says her biracial son struggled getting past a page riddled with the N-word. So what are we teaching our children? We're validating that these words are acceptable, and they're not acceptable by no means. Accomack County parent of two, Victoria Coombs, agrees. Coming from a pretty big African-American community myself, I believe that it's not right to even put that in a book, let alone read it to a child. But others say banning a classic for offensive language can be a slippery slope. I don't want to see it happen because if you start with one, one racial word in a book, then you have to go on and on and on. And pretty soon you'll be burning books left and right. I mean, everybody's read read it. I mean, it didn't change the difference in my views at all. You know, I'd like my son to read those books and, you know, my daughter is mixed and I don't have a problem. I love those books. And Catherine Glazer's kids may still get the chance to read them in Accomack schools. The complaint filed called a request for reconsideration of learning resources will now go before a committee which will review the books and make a recommendation. And that committee will be made up of a principal, a librarian, a teacher, a parent, and perhaps others. It will make a recommendation to the superintendent who tells me there's no set date on when that will happen just yet. The final decision can be appealed. I'm Liz Kilmer, 10 on your side. One person shot in Norfolk is just into our newsroom now. Dispatchers tell us that person walked into Sentara Norfolk General Hospital about 30 minutes ago. We are working to learn more about how that person got hurt and whether officers are looking out for a shooter. New tonight, Decision 2016 is not decided yet, at least not in Durham County, North Carolina. Election officials there have voted to recount 94,000 ballots entered late on Election Day. This is especially important as the race between incumbent Republican Governor Pat McCrory and Democratic Attorney General Roy Cooper is still technically undecided. Cooper has declared victory, but McCrory has not yet conceded. The latest numbers show Cooper leading by just over 10,000 ballots, which beats the margin McCrory would need to declare a recount. Six other counties still have not finalized their results. A busy day, though, for President-elect Donald Trump. In two weeks, he'll hold a news conference outlining plans to leave his business and focus on the Oval Office. And among the latest announcements of who will fill the cabinet, former Goldman Sachs executive Steven Mnuchin as Treasury Secretary, billionaire investor Wilbur Ross as Commerce Secretary, and word that one time vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin could be Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Tomorrow, we expect to learn the details of a plan for the incoming administration to save a 1,000 jobs in Indiana. Trump will meet with carrier officials in Indiana Thursday to talk about their deal that kept jobs in the U.S. Carrier originally planned to shut down those two air conditioning plants and send those jobs to Mexico. New tonight, the unemployment rate in North Carolina is up in 44 counties. That's six times more than the amount of counties that saw an increase in October of last year. Only 22 counties saw an unemployment rate decrease last month. Developing news now out of York County, where a man is behind bars for a Thanksgiving Day murder. Deputies say that Colston Ryan Lewis of Newport News shot and killed Richard Irvin outside the county grill in Yorktown. Irvin had worked as security at a tent party there. Investigators say the shooting happened when Irvin removed Lewis from the party. Early Wednesday, police got a tip that Lewis was at his family's home in Newport News. We made contact with the occupants of the house, and Ryan did come out on his own and surrender himself without incident. Lewis declined our interview request from jail. Well, your commute may have just gotten a little easier. After three years of construction, traffic is flowing along the Martin Luther King Expressway a month early. The new spans connects the midtown and downtown tunnels in Portsmouth. Ten on your side was first to cross over with Chopper 10 overhead when that road opened up this evening. Even better, you will not right. have to pay a toll huh? to use it. Yeah. Before you head out tomorrow morning, count on Jen Lewis to watch the traffic on the new expressway and all over Hampton Roads. Join the news team on your side every weekday on Wavy News 10 Today, starting bright and early at 4.30 a.m. Fire and heartbreak are sweeping parts of the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee, where seven people have now died. Many are still missing from wildfires that have leveled neighborhoods and businesses. So much needed rain did come through today, 
that caused mudslides and toppled trees. While some got away with their lives, they are remembering the family heirlooms they lost. Mom and grandmother's wedding dress and our pictures. My mom's hope chest. Federal prosecutors say a man admitted to setting two wildfires in North Carolina. They arrested 49-year-old Keith Eugene and charged him in both fires there. Those fires in Tennessee are hitting home for a woman in Portsmouth. Kelly Ems is from Sevier County. Ems says she's devastated to see much of her hometown destroyed and is now working with a shelter in Gatlinburg and gathering donations here in Hampton Roads. It felt like a piece of my heart had just shattered because with every picture, every video, I knew these places, I, I knew these people, and, and just to watch it unfold over a screen and be helpless of not being there to reach out. Ems plans on leaving tomorrow morning. She'll drive eight hours to reach the shelter and says her sons will also be helping wildfire victims. Deadly storms are moving across the south. See some of the devastation left behind as Chief Meteorologist Don Slater tracks that same system. Looking ahead, Norfolk City Treasurer will take the stand in his federal corruption trial. Hear his attorney explain the decision to testify. And getting ready for Christmas, the tree at Rockefeller Center is now lit up and ready for the holidays. This is live. We're going to show you the festivities from earlier tonight. You're watching Wavy News 10 at 11 with Tom Shedd, Anita Blanton, Chief Meteorologist Don Slater, and Bruce Rader with sports. Looking ahead to tomorrow after two weeks of testimony, we will hear from the man on trial from, for public corruption, Norfolk City Treasurer Anthony Burfoot. Ten of your sides, Jason Marks, recaps today's developments and previews what lies ahead. Well, day 15 in the Anthony Burfoot public corruption trial will be the biggest day of them all, and that's because Anthony Burfoot himself will take the stand. He's innocent. He wants to tell the jury that he's innocent. We now know Anthony Burfitt will take the stand in his own defense. He's accused of taking money and gifts in exchange for political favors while on city council. There have been a lot of ugly things said about him that aren't true, a lot of ugly allegations, and I think he has looked forward to this opportunity to tell his side of what really happened and didn't happen. Burfoot has sat in court very quiet every day, though he has been involved in the process, frequently whispering questions to ask in his attorney Andrew Sachs's ear. Sachs says the decision to have Burfoot testify was a natural process. I don't think it was difficult in this case. I think that really from the beginning I have always felt that Anthony had a story to tell that was compelling, that was honest, that was truthful. Uh, and given the, the details that have been alleged against him, I think it would be natural for someone who didn't do these things to, to take the stand and, and say that. Sachs says there wasn't that one moment when the decision was made. It was something Burfoot has been wanting to do since the trial began. We have not heard anything publicly from Anthony Burfoot, not one word since he was first indicted on these charges. But today in court, he stood up and he says he was advised of his rights. He went on to say that he made this decision alone and he said he felt it was something he needed to do. I'll be in court first thing tomorrow morning. I have the latest for you right here starting on Wavy News 10 at noon. But for now, that's the latest here in Norfolk. Jason Marks, 10 on your side. And we've been telling you this trial could take up to a month. Let's review some of the big names we've already seen on the stand. Early on, the prosecution called Norfolk developer Ronnie Boone. He has pleaded guilty to bribing city officials, including Burfoot. Then several developers, NFL Hall of Famer Bruce Smith, the Etheridge brothers, and Tommy Arney. We even heard from former mayor Paul Frame. The defense has called witness after witness in hopes of proving Burfoot's innocence. And it's not over yet. Find our ongoing special coverage of the Burfoot trial on wavy.com. We are getting new video of deadly storms across the south that, leaving, that left five dead. Three people died in Alabama after a strong possible tornado touchdown ripping up a mobile home here. And a water spout made landfall in the Florida panhandle today. Four tornadoes hit Mississippi 
and two more people died when twisters hit Tennessee. We are now in the final moments of the Atlantic hurricane season. NOAA reports more storms than average for the first time in four years. Fifteen named storms popped up in the Atlantic, including seven hurricanes. Gaston, Nicole, and Matthew were all major hurricanes, which brought damage to our area. Now, your Super Doppler 10 forecast with Chief Meteorologist Don Slater. And we've got a lot of stuff going on, so we've got to show you what's going on with that. End of the hurricane season. There's nothing else out there uh, whatsoever. But we got some rainfall, and these areas of rain are really uh, the leftovers from some of that action from earlier today. There were some big thunderstorms on down near the Charlotte, North Carolina area, uh, but they've lifted northeastward, and they're not nearly as strong. Got no thunder and lightning even associated with them right now. I've got the lightning tracker on here, but we're not seeing anything as far as lightning out of this particular area. I do want to show you what's going on. Storm track this particular area again as it moves northeastward at about 55, 60 miles an hour. It's going to be toward Landstown, uh, for example, 1152 and right at the ocean front, right at midnight, uh, this area of heavier rainfall. And it could be very, very heavy, but only for a very, very short time because once again, this is moving very rapidly. Uh, so yeah, heavy, heavy rain, but it'll only last for maybe five minutes as it moves on through uh, coming up in the next in the next half an hour, 45 minutes. Could have a little bit of wind with it, 35, 40 mile an hour winds, but thunder and lightning, not seeing it. Uh, we're seeing it from central Gates County all the way out up toward the Whaleyville area of southern Suffolk toward downtown Suffolk as well. Uh, seeing some pockets of more moderate rainfall to the north, northeast of uh, Wakefield, seeing it into Surrey County, a little pocket of more moderate rainfall. And here and there into Isle of Wight County. Uh, but again, this is the main area. And toward Elizabeth City, uh, northwest of Elizabeth City see a little bit of more moderate rainfall. Here's where we are for the peninsula. You're going to get it eventually, but it's not as heavy as some of those areas farther to the south. And you can see some rainfall scattered for the middle peninsula, the northern neck, and the eastern shore. They've had bigger thunderstorms to the east and northeast of the D.C. area. The D.C. area has had even some uh, severe thunderstorm warnings out of some of that action. Here we see these thunderstorms still plowing through Georgia. Uh, and again, for our part of the world, we got one more little rain band later on tonight. There's a cold front out into here and that cold front will slide through and it could have a little bit of scattered rainfall with it around four or five in the morning midnight there's the rainfall here's our future track computer model seven o'clock in the morning rain's gone our skies cleared we see some cooler air for the day thursday friday some cooler air as well uh and even cooler than that for saturday and into sunday sunday i think we'll see a little bit more cloud cover right at the end of the day and this rainfall off to the west by sunday evening it's likely to hit our area probably by monday night and Tuesday. So again, one more rain band is out there, and it's likely to get us around 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. A closer view of what's going on with our future track computer model as of the midnight hour. In other words, 40 minutes from now, we are looking, uh, again, at some scattered rainfall into the area. And here comes that last band of rain along with the cold front. Winds flip on over to the west to northwest. Temperatures drop for the day tomorrow and likely be into the mid-60s early in the day and then drop on down from there. There's we are by Friday morning. Cool 36 to around 41. There's we are Friday during the day around 50, 55. Uh, there's we are by Friday at the end of the day. Lots of low cloud cover, occasionally some rainfall with it. Uh, we could see a little bit of wind uh, with some of these areas of rainfall that are moving on in in the next hour or next 40 minutes or so as they move through the uh, northeast North Carolina and the south side of the Hampton Road cities. Around 68, 69, 70 degrees into the area. And temperatures will maintain into the upper 60s around 70 through around 4 o'clock. Then that cold front comes through and it cools things down for tomorrow. Not bad, though. 66, 55, close to normal, and then a much below normal, or about 4 degrees below normal uh, for Saturday and Sunday. Wavy News 10 at 11 continues after this commercial break. Well, if this isn't a sign that Christmas is only a few weeks away, tonight a Christmas tree lit up Rockefeller Center. A 94-foot gull Norway spruce now stands tall in Manhattan. It made the 140-mile trip from upstate New York down to the city. Workers spent weeks stringing more than 50,000 LED lights. Celebrities helped flip the switch as millions of you watch from home.
got one of those in my living room. Virginia Tech with a thriller on the basketball court tonight. The Redskins get ready for the Cardinals. And would Old Dominion be able to rebound from the Bahamas to beat Dartmouth? Find out next on the Sports Wrap. ACC Big Ten Challenge. Virginia Tech at Michigan under two to go. Seth Allen coast to coast after being down 10 with seven minutes left. The Hokies with their first lead of the game. Minute to go. Tech up one. Make that four. Seth Allen the three to the end. 3.7 left. Michigan down three. Final chance to tie. No. Virginia Tech with the upset road win over Michigan 73 to 70. What a comeback by the 6-1 and one Hokies who are looking good this year. Hi everybody, I'm Bruce Rader. Old Dominion at home tonight against winless Dartmouth starter Zoran Talley on the bench here in street clothes. Suspended indefinitely for a violation of team rules, but Brandon Stith, a conference player of the year candidate. The Monarchs looking good in the first half, but they go cold after halftime. That's Jordan Baker from Hampton. 14 points, four rebounds, three steals. Ahmad Caver also with 14 points. And while the Monarchs' defense was all right, they shot just 23% from the field in the second half. Thank goodness it happened against Dartmouth. ODU gets its fourth win of the year, 59-47. to Norfolk State is on the road up in Chicago. They lose to Loyola by 13 points. Moving on to football, Old Dominion will take on Eastern Michigan in the Bahamas Bowl next month and talk about an amazing turnaround. Eastern Michigan went two decades without a winning season until now. The Eagles had only one win last year, and now they're headed to a bowl game. Impressive this year, Bruce, going 7-5. and five. They started 4-1. and one. They beat a Wyoming team that was 10-2 and two this year and is playing for their conference championship, a Wyoming team that beat Boise State. So this is a good football team. They just won their last game against Central Mission to get to 7-5. and five. Very impressed with what he's done. Different team, Bruce, than the teams we beat in 14 and 15. Coach Wilder and I will talk more about the bowl announcement tomorrow night at 1045 on Fox 43, a special Thursday night bowl edition of the Old Dominion Football Show. The Redskins travel to Arizona to take on the disappointing Cardinals on Sunday. Washington enters week 13 as the number six seed in the NFC playoff picture, and every game is important. Right now, um... Uh, we've won six games, so we have to continue to keep winning so that we can um, pretty much solidify ourselves and just make it, uh, just make sure we can stamp, you know, our place uh, in the playoffs. So we, we know what we have ahead of us, so we just have to continue to stay together, cultivate the relationships that we need to cultivate and keep that synergy and camaraderie there. That pocket of heavy rain that I showed you earlier is just hitting Norfolk and Portsmouth right now. It's weakened a little bit. It's going to hit Virginia Beach in the next 20 minutes as well. And then things lighten up a bit after that. And lots of sunshine and cooler coming up after that. Small price to pay. Let's look outside New York City and Rockefeller Center. See you tomorrow morning.